If you want a car that can pamper you like a spa weekend, but can also traverse your country estate without getting stuck, then you want a premium off-roader. And so here's the CarWow Top 10 Best Luxury SUVs. The Porsche Cayenne is as big as a minibus, but goes, stops and corners like a sports car. Despite its impressive agility and performance, the Cayenne has all the advantages you'd expect of a large SUV. So you get masses of passenger space and an enormous boot, while the inside feels as luxurious as a boutique hotel. Shame though that there's no diesel version, nor a seven-seat option. Oh, and that it's a case of nice ass. shame about the face. The Range Rover delivers Rolls-Royce luxury in a practical SUV body. Inside there's swathes of wood, lashings of leather and acres of space. While the driving position is so lofty, you get to look down on all the plebs. And should you wish to venture off-road, it can cope with far tougher terrain than most other luxury SUVs. However, you could still end up getting stuck because Range Rovers don't exactly have the best reliability record. If you have a big brood and the need for something that's comfy on-road and outstanding off it, then the Land Rover Discovery is a great choice. There's plenty of space in each of its three rows of seats and the quality is almost on a par with the more expensive Range Rover. And if you want to save even more cash, there's a cheaper 2-litre diesel option. However, avoid the miserly entry-level S model as it doesn't even have leather nor a sat-nav. It may look almost identical to the original G-Wagon, but the G-Class is all new. New bodywork, new technology, and a bonkers new 4-litre twin-turbo V8 in the G63. The new G has a proper 4x4 ladder frame chassis and three lockable differentials, so it's still a legend off-road. But new suspension and steering means it's no longer an absolute pig on it. All this comes at a price, though. The G-Class starts from £140,000, and driving one will make you look like a footballer, rapper, or gangster. The Bentley Bentayga is the automotive equivalent of a motorised country manor. Its interior is trimmed with an entire herd's worth of leather, and there's more wood than you'll find in a lap dancing club. Also, it can be specified with high-end accessories, including a hand-built dashboard clock that costs, wait for it, £150,000. Yes, that's more than the car's actual starting price. Super powerful engines give it supersonic performance, yet it's totally relaxing even at Mach 2. Unfortunately, it's not the toughest off-road, and it's got the looks only a mother could love. With its huge exterior presence and plush interior, Mercedes GLE has everything you'd expect of a posh SUV. Inside, the huge infotainment screens make you feel like you're at the IMAX cinema, and they're available with Merck's cool augmented reality sat-nav, which superimposes direction graphics over a camera feed of the road ahead, so you never take a wrong turn. It's a seven-seater too, though the third row is a tight squeeze, and the excellent two-litre diesel isn't available with the plush air suspension, because of reasons. The Volvo XC90 is almost as posh as a BMW or Audi, yet refreshingly is a lot cooler and less ostentatious. It's a genuine seven-seater too, with room for smaller adults in the very back, and even with the third row in use, the boot is still a decent size. You can get a super quick plug-in hybrid that's cheap to run, but it's very expensive to buy in the first place, and all the engines have just two litres and four cylinders, which is a little bit under-endowed for this kind of car. The Audi Q7 is well-built and has excellent technology that's super easy to use, even for a complete Luddite. The engines are smooth and punchy, and it corners better than it has a right to, and with the optional air suspension, it's one of the comfiest cars ever. The cabin is very roomy too, well, in the first two rows. Sadly, the third row is only for children or torture. Oh, and it doesn't really look like an imposing SUV, more an estate car that's eaten all the buys. The Q8 is actually based on the Q7. However, it's a five-seater only, and this means there's no compromise on space. Also, it's been set up for a slightly sportier drive, yet the standard fit air suspension means it dances over bumps like a ballerina, albeit one that weighs over two tons. Inside, it gets Audi's latest and greatest technology and ice-cool interior design. The exterior is also de rigueur, yet slightly reminiscent of the legendary Quattro from the 1980s. It's just a shame that it has a gaping gob like a basking shark. The new BMW X5 might not be the most revolutionary design, but each aspect of the car has been honed to perfection. It's very roomy, and there's a seven-seat option. Also, the interior build quality is second to none, while the infotainment system has so many different modes of input that there's one to please absolutely everybody. It drives brilliantly, whether in town, on the motorway, down a country road, or away from the beaten track, especially with the optional off-road pack fitted. Essentially, the BMW X5 is the head boy, or girl, 
of the luxury SUV class. That's probably why so many people resent it. Now, you may be wondering why I haven't included some models in this list. Well, it's either because, like the Rolls-Royce Cullinan, I haven't driven them yet, or they just weren't worthy. But do you agree with my list? Let me know in the comments box. Also, click below to subscribe to this channel on the video to watch something else, or on the deals box to the right to see how much you can save a car wow.